And we also will be launching the new format website of the Indian National Science Academy today, this afternoon. So may I invite Professor Chandima Shaha, the president of the academy, to the dais. The first event in the post-lunch session will be the release of a book, or launching of a book by name, Chetty. Good afternoon. Uh, the first um, uh, event is actually the lecture by uh, uh, Dr. N. Kalai Selvi, who is the Secretary of DSIR and Director General CSIR. Um, she, we invited her to come and deliver the lecture, but due to some um, engagement, she couldn't come. So she has sent us a recorded, uh, uh, I think it's a video recording of her lecture. So before uh, we go into that, I'll just introduce her briefly. Uh, she's, uh, she assumed charge as Secretary DSIR and Director General of CSIR on August 8 uh, this year. And she is the first woman Director General of CSIR. Uh, prior to taking over as Secretary DSIR and DG CSIR, she was working as Director CSIR Central Electrochemical Research Institute in Karaikudi. Uh, Dr. Kalai Selvi's research work of more than 25 years is primarily focused on electrochemical power systems and in particular development of electrode materials, custom design synthesis methods, optimization of reaction parameters and electrochemical evaluation of in-house prepared electrode materials for their suitability in energy storage device assembly. Her research interests include lithium and beyond lithium batteries, supercapacitors, capacitors, and waste-to-wealth driven electrodes and electrolytes for energy storage and electrocatalytic applications. Um, Dr. Kalai Selvi has more than 135 research papers and six patents to her credit. She is the recipient of many prestigious awards, including MRSI Medal, CSI Raman Research Fellowship, INSA NRF Exchange Award, Brain Pool Fellowship of Korea, the Most Inspiring Women Scientist Award, and C.V. Raman Mahila Vigyan Purushkar at uh, 12th National Women's Science Congress held at Mysore. Uh, can we have her, uh, 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 Karthik, can we have her lecture? Yes. Lights off, please. Lights off. Did she have slides? Namaskar and good afternoon. I'm extremely happy to be a part of uh, the very important, uh, historically important scientific function which is being conducted by INSA, which is the 88th uh, annual general body meeting. And taking this opportunity, I wish to place on record uh, my congratulations and appreciations to the organizers, and especially to Madam Chandrima Saha for a kind invitation due to which I'm able to meet all of you virtually today and able to share some of my thoughts. Uh, friends, I'm of the opinion that today I'll be just sharing uh, some of my viewpoints uh, related to uh, energy, energy and its perspectives uh, which are related to this particular country that is India. We are now living in one particular uh, situation wherein energy is the talk of the town or uh, I would say it is a hot topic because for any country to escalate from a position of developing country to get itself uh, accepted in the global level as a developed country, few points are very, very important of which ensuring energy security and ensuring energy management, these are very, very important apart from other securities like food security, health security, uh, strategic security and societal security. So when we talk about energy, uh, I think we have to really now thank uh, Mother Nature because Mother Nature has abundantly blessed India with a lot of energy, inherent energy, positive energy uh, in the form of resources, be it metals or minerals or soil or mountain or river or air or space, whatever you say, we are rich in all respects and therefore uh, it becomes our bound duty to ensure that we are maintaining all the naturally available resources in a perfect manner 
by means of which we are leaving the earth back to the next generation in a very very good condition especially to qualify itself as a great place to live are we doing justice at this point of time is a debatable question and it is a thousand million dollar worth question because uh, india a country which got independence in the year 1947 especially after uh, post independence this country has seen a lot of revolutions of which industrial revolution is one big thing that has taken india from one level to the next level Uh, along with that we had green revolution blue revolution white revolution due to which the society really got itself escalated for its requirements fulfilled very timely and to the level that was required now coming to industry revolution we had number of industries coming up and this industrial revolution has given uh, given a kind of a boom in our economy a kind of a sign of development a kind of confidence to us also so these are all the positivities of this industrial revolution but at the same time these industries when we are working with the too many number of industries we have to essentially and simultaneously take care of the things that are coming out of these industries either in the form of a solid waste or in the form of a liquid waste or in the form of even undesirable gases are we taking enough care to address all these wastes whether it is a solid waste liquid waste or gases so i think here we have to think uh, maybe in a much more greater uh, importance should be given that is my point of view so when we talk about that kind of uh, addressing this solid liquid and gases related waste management i wish to now think about only the carbon related footprints and the carbon capture because when we talk about energy and especially clean energy and green energy we have to start from carbon capture so are we giving enough attention at this particular point of time uh, to this particular area of carbon capture friends we are trying our level best to come up with our own indigenous technologies and uh, to the best of my knowledge is concerned especially in the uh, recent past in the last one or two years even csir is now coming up with a kind of a demonstration and proof of concept level a kind of a material that can really absorb co2 in a very selective manner especially at low gas condition whenever it is present along with co socks and nox and it can also desorb co2 at a temperature not more than 10 to 15 degrees with respect to the temperature at which it was it was absorbed i'm talking about the co2 absorption so if at all this particular technology is implemented scaled up and made popular through proper commercialization i think a country can really come up with a kind of a part of redressal mechanism related to reduction of carbon footprints because the honorable prime minister of india he has already uh, signed agreements cop 21 22 26 by means of which definitely we have to reduce the carbon footprint in the coming days and we have to take this particular point very very importantly in our mind so to what extent the country is getting itself uh, ready or prepared for this particular challenges yes in many ways uh, other organizations also like whether it is dst or mnre funded projects or other research organizations they are also coming up with their own efforts to mitigate this kind of a carbon uh, reduction especially carbon footprints and we from csi we are also coming up with kind of success stories especially in the recent days this is one way of addressing or uh, reducing or mitigating the kind of carbon footprint now coming to the uh, clean energy and green energy again we have broadly two types of energy that uh, all of you know one is uh, conventional or the fossil fuel based energy the other one is the renewable energy so we from csr again we are working on all possible forms of energy this so for example coal energy petroleum energy hydrogen energy then after uh, all these uh, forms of uh, i mean renewable energy is harvested how best this energy could be saved or stored all these uh, areas we are having our own uh, projects as well as development zones so when you just think about the coal energy again india is rich with coal mines 
So to what extent we are ready with the clean coal technologies? Even today we are depending upon other countries for clean coal technologies to some extent and I think this is high time we have to reduce our dependence on other countries for even clean coal technologies. Yes, from CSIR we are now taking very, very important steps to ensure and to make it possible in the coming days that clean coal technologies will also be indigenized by means of which our dependence on other countries will get reduced in the coming days. Again, our Honorable Prime Minister is keeping on insisting one particular point that Atmanirbhar ka, self-sufficient and self-reliant India, especially during this Amritka. Because after 75 years of independence, now we are marching towards the 100th year of independence. And at least now we should really reiterate and we have to tell to ourselves and we have to make it as a great popular information to the community at a greater level that this is high time that every one of us should think in the best possible way by means of which you and I can contribute to this country in terms of Atmanirbharva or self-reliance. So we have to start it from the fossil fuels because even today our dependence on other countries is more with respect to our fuel requirements. Similarly, with respect to petroleum energy also our dependence is more. Again, CSIR is coming up with a kind of a success story with respect to biojet fuel. Recently, we demonstrated a 15 percentage of blended oil for its successful flying hours for a period of 60 hours. And now we have set the target as we have to successfully demonstrate 200 flying hours in the coming days. And I am hopeful that we will be able to do that also. And we are not getting stopped over there. We are trying our level best to, to increase the blending from 15 to 50 percentage. And even the engines are also getting prepared in that particular direction. And therefore, maybe within another one or two years, uh, I am hopeful that we will be able to come up with success stories with respect to 50 percentage of the blended oil and that too for uh, as a biojet fuel. So again, when we talk about uh, the kind of a bridge between the conventional energy and the renewable energy, we can say that the great uh, hero of uh, today, which is nothing but hydrogen. So when we talk about hydrogen, it is a middleman that can connect the conventional fuel as well as the renewable fuel. And we from CSA are working, we are working in the field of hydrogen energy also. And uh, just a few months back, we also got uh, ourselves introduced to a very great mission from CSR within CSR, which we call it as CSAR's H2T mission, Hydrogen to Technology Mission. And the happy news is country will also be announcing the nationally pan-India based uh, green hydrogen mission which will be launched by MNRE maybe in the coming days. Honorable Prime Minister is also very keen. And very recently in one of the society meetings of CSAR, Honorable Prime Minister also made a mention that whether CSAR can think seriously in the area of green hydrogen, clean hydrogen, where we can think whether it is possible to get this green hydrogen even from the wastewater. This is a kind of a thought process with which the country's leadership is thinking science with a, that kind of a far foresighted thought. Means you and I as a scientific fraternity, we have to put in our thought process in a much more focused way, in a much more repurposed way, and in a much more targeted manner, by means of which we should be in a position to do justice to the dreams of the Honorable Prime Minister of India. So with that particular point in mind, the CSR has already initiated a, a green hydrogen mission under which we will be just having some amount of basic R&D as a kind of a funnel we, we have shaped this particular project. And once the TRL level is matured, then those projects will go to the stem of the funnel and then they will be just going further for their dissemination in the real-time application. So uh, at different TRL levels, we will come up with different types of technologies and maybe within another three to five years, we will be able to come up with some kind of a justifying proof of concept demonstrations in real-time applications with respect to green hydrogen. That is a hope and I'm really confident that my CSAR family will be definitely making this dream a reality in the coming days. Now having said so much about this energy, for its generation, 
I think this is much more important that we have to really give more importance to convert one form of energy into another form of energy and also to store energy in a very, very potential and a perfect storage medium. So when it comes to uh, energy conversion, definitely we can think about DSSC or SPV and other silicon related photovoltaics also by means of which we can uh, try to address a, at least a small portion of country's energy requirement. And when it comes to storage again, uh, we have to think about very seriously uh, batteries, supercapacitors and even redox flow systems also. When we talk about batteries, uh, the days of lead acid batteries, it has gone. It, it is, uh, this is not the right time to think about how best I can uh, reinvent lead acid batteries. Even though it's a century old battery and it has done its level best in the area of energy storage and for real time applications, it's better to move away from lead acid batteries because now we are living in an era where we just go for slim, sleek, thin, flexible materials and devices. And therefore, uh, we started uh, moving from lead acid batteries to nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, and now finally we are now uh, getting ourselves ended up with lithium batteries. So with respect to lithium batteries, again, uh, everybody is asking, do we have enough amount of lithium in the country? Friends, uh, let us not worry about the availability of lithium in the country for the time being because even if we are able to recycle all the mobile phone uh, that we are using right at this point of time which is having lithium, if we are able to recycle that amount of lithium, then I think we will be able to address the futuristic requirement to the extent of one third of its futuristic requirement and therefore Without worrying much about this lithium availability in India, one more point also I can tell you. For example, in the case of lithium batteries, the amount of lithium used is less than one percentage. Therefore, let us not worry about whether lithium is available uh, abundantly in the country. Whereas uh, the lithium batteries, we are now uh, habituated to one kind of a lifestyle wherein lithium battery is becoming a very, very important and it is becoming an inseparable and unforgettable friend. Therefore, in such case, this is high time we have to indigenize lithium battery related technology also. And uh, thankfully, again, uh, CSAR is uh, having uh, good technologies in terms of lithium batteries also. We are coming up with the success stories because recently we established a facility that can produce to 1000 cells per day, that is cylindrical cells, and soon that will also become operational. And therefore, uh, this gives a kind of a confidence that yes, lithium battery technology could be practiced in India also. So this is just a start. This is a point of initiation. I think from there we can just take it to different levels. Maybe in the coming years we will come up with more and more number of uh, lithium battery related technologies. And to our credit we have some IP rights also in the name of our country. And therefore as far as lithium technology is concerned we are having a, a good uh, say over this particular technology with respect to today's uh, perspective. And similarly, we are now having another good friend who is coming up uh, as a, uh, I won't say as a competitor, as a uh, maybe complementing uh, partner, which is nothing but sodium battery. So in sodium battery technology also, we have a number of uh, technologies and patents which are available in the country by number of research organizations. And uh, this combination of lithium technology and sodium battery technology, these two should be prioritized in the country in the coming days. They are getting prioritized by number of funding agencies and therefore maybe in the near future we will be able to come up with a number of success stories in both the cases of lithium as well as uh, sodium by means of which we will be able to address a portion of countries energy storage related challenges. And also friends, I just made a mention about the redox system. So we started our efforts from the uh, CSAR side to come up with some kind of a proof of concept and technology development related to redox flow batteries also. So this uh, all vanadium system or metal halide batteries. So these redox flow batteries are also coming up in a nice way and the technology leads are very, very encouraging. They are giving us new confidence, new line of thought process also by means of which Wherever we have a massive energy storage, especially for stationary applications, 
we can start considering redox flow batteries also. So days are not so far off that these redox flow batteries will also be getting celebrated in the society for their real-time applications. And of course, as I already mentioned, supercapacitors, if at all we are able to make a combination of batteries and supercapacitors as a hybrid, I think we will be able to address the requirements of energy as well as power. Battery will take care of the energy part and capacitor will, supercapacitor will take care of the power part. And therefore, wherever you require high energy and high power, this particular combination of batteries and supercapacitors as hybrids will definitely address all our real-time related applications and requirements. So if we are able to really encourage projects in this particular direction, be it carbon absorption, carbon capture, and then carbon for its uh, further utilization as a usable product, we can think about it how best carbon could be utilized in the form of uh, maybe methanol or methane or uh, adipic acid or any kind of uh, C1 to CN chemistry. We can think about uh, the usable forms of uh, CO2 and also the storage of CO2. All these points are to be taken care. This is one. And second thing is starting from coal energy, petroleum energy, hydrogen energy, energy that is converted from one form to another form and energy for its storage. If we are able to address these points, I think we are doing enough justice to the dreams of the Honorable Prime Minister of the country as well as to the society. Now the last point is energy management or energy audit. To what extent we can ensure that we are doing all of our attempts, whether it is a, a reaction or a process or a product uh, formation, in uh, all these cases, are we giving enough care that we follow only the energy efficient process? So I think this is where uh, the importance and the significance and the requirement of energy audit that assumes importance. And therefore, this energy audit and energy management, again, we from CSAR, we are giving importance to that part also. So energy audit is now initiated internally in CSAR. So every lab will be now monitored for its energy audit and energy management related protocols. And soon we will make it as a movement within CSAR. Once we are successful in this particular effort and attempt, we can popularize it to a bigger level also in the coming days. So putting uh, all these points in one natural and capsule friends, uh, CSAR is fully, fully geared up and we are trying our level best to make a mention in the coming days that yes, country is moving in the right direction as far as its energy related requirements are concerned. Finally, you may be thinking that if at all e-mobility is immediately coming into action, do we have enough infrastructure in the country? Yes, country is thinking in a big way. Actually, organizations, policy makers and officials are thinking and they are having deep dive discussions how best charging stations, swapping stations could be arranged across the country throughout the uh, highways by means of which we can make this commutation as an economically affordable and viable process. Therefore, by all means, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister's dream as well as the Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, both of them are really steering us in the right way. And we from CSAR as a publicly funded organization and a dedicated R&D community and society, we also really feel the importance of it. And we, are re we have already rededicated our uh, efforts in this particular direction. And therefore, friends, I think uh, in the coming days, we will be able to come up with number of success stories with respect to real-time application, especially in terms of CSAR driven and indigenous technologies. This is one point I'm telling from the organization from which I'm hailing from. But taking this as a point, I think every other organization, every citizen of this country also should think that what best I can do, by means of which I can make this country to feel proud. And what best I can do for this country to get itself celebrated and accepted for its developments in the global scenario. Because whatever we do 
if at all it is getting appreciated only within the country it doesn't make much importance whatever is being done in india it should be celebrated across the globe that we call it as global acceptance therefore friends using such platforms such important meetings such great august gatherings we have to again reiterate and tell to each and every one of us that this is high time that all of us should have only one thought process we all should have only one uh, future because even in g20 honorable prime minister made a mention that it is one earth one family and one future therefore all of us we are going to have only one future for which we all should think unanimously let us put our efforts in the synergized way by means of which we should make india as an energy efficient country in the coming days for which whichever help is required from csar csar is free to offer to all the citizens of this nation so with this few words once again i take this opportunity to thank the organizers and i wish the entire proceedings a great success and i'm extremely happy to note that you will be soon releasing a souvenir also in this event my best wishes and appreciations to that also thank you so very much special thanks are due to madam chandrima thank you one and all namaskar